I'm Chia Rodriguez and um, we are here at Rivershy Farms. Um, this is our farm that we've been cultivating on for about 17 years. I think maybe this is our 18th summer actually. Uh, yeah. And um, we are part of the Mendocino Generations uh, Farm summer. Alliance. <laughs> we didn't, it was, it's our 17th summer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna edit that part out. <laughs> no, that, that makes it real. Um, so we are part of the Mendocino Generations uh, Farm Alliance here in Mendocino County, and I'm the operations director of it. And Jamie and I founded Mendo Gen. Um, Mendocino Generation. Mendocino Generations, like two years ago now. And I'm, I'm Jamie Beatty from Riverside Farms. Uh, the farm we named after our oldest son, which is what led us to getting this property. So our unique, when we first started growing, you know, uh, it's going on 20 years now, um, we just got gifted seeds from um, the ranch. You know, this, this ranch that we live on was an intentional community, started in the early 70s, and uh, a lot of people had been doing their thing up here for a long time and, and there are some really good old school breeders up here and so um, they gifted us like our first seeds to start out with and and, and you know it was really really amazing stuff um, like not not that I've ever seen necessarily better you know just different and so but there was other things that were popular out in the world and so we started bringing in um, some genetics from from you know kind of the mainstream primarily like one of the one of the main things we had going is we were gifted like some kind of like Afghan uh, Kush crosses um, that when I started out we called it the burly Kush because like it looked like just like the cushiest Kush you've ever seen except the thing was like you know at nine feet tall and nine feet wide and and but like the the flower structure and the resin production you know was and the uh, the effects were totally in line with the you know, my Kush plant and so I kind of lion bred that out and um, so as, as I did that, it became smaller and smaller and smaller and it was also right at the same time that like everybody was just throwing Kush onto the end of the name of their strain so they could sell it and, and so, um, and that was also kind of in the same timeline we had our second son which is named True and so I decided, you know, at first I called it the Burly Kush because it was so big and burly and then we switched the name to the True Kush and then we crossed that but it did get a little powdery mildew and so then we crossed that with uh, a blue dream which is pretty powdery mildew resistant but you know a big sativa plant but that's also early harvesting and so from that we came out with the true berry more and that was really powdery mildew resistant and also um, uh, the roots were very resilient to uh, like um, like fusarium infections and also root aphids and then so we've used kind of the offspring of that in a lot of our breeding program both the true kush and then also like the true berry more offspring trying to like breed powdery mildew out of our program up here um, and so some things that have come out of that cross with you know like white fire OG or a fire OG were like the Jedi Knights lemon fire OG and um, that true barrymore is probably one of your signature strains. Yeah, there. it's one of it's one of our earliest signature strains. Okay. Yeah, you know, and then and that's kind of led into pretty much all the other. Yeah, so there's a little bit of true barrymore and everything. Pretty much everything we got up here. Yeah, <laughs> the Arcana OG yeah, is a really special one too. I think also what makes our farm set apart from others is that, you know, that breeding factor, but um, our Appalachian is actually a pretty prime spot. We wish we had a little bit more hours of sun, but, you know, in this, this zone, we don't get a lot of coastal fogs. Sometimes it comes here, but not that often, and um, we get nice winds, which are helpful for keeping pests and diseases and molds away a little bit, too. So we have a nice view, but... Um, I think this is a great appellation for growing. And 
we're also implementing um, permaculture practices into the farm more and more nowadays. Um, now that we can reintegrate all the like the flowers and the herbs and the vegetables into the the, the cannabis garden too. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. We're south uh, southeast facing, pretty much. So. so. you get the most out of that sunlight. We do. I mean, we you know we don't get all day sun like lots of people, but it seems like it. You know, it's enough. We get eight hours of sun in our gardens, at least full sun, eight mm -hmm. to ten. Um, what what do you want the world to know about your farm? <laughs> um. Well, that we are heritage cannabis farmers, and we're doing it in a really small scale way. We're craft we love our plants we really like put a lot of intention into every aspect of the cultivating um and you can tell that by like jamie's dedication and the, his love and his like he pays attention really well like each one of those are his children and so he he tracks every little detail about all the strains and you can ask him a question about any year any strain any plant where it was located he knows exactly what was up with it <laughs> yeah you know like i think that we pay a lot of attention you know mm -hmm. and like put put a lot of in, in, intention into our plants and i really care for them and you know it's not just about raising like the biggest fattest crop like it's really about <clears throat> like what you know what you can do for that plant and what it does for you you know like mm -hmm. that that's what the relationship is for me i think like and what i like i have a special relationship with each of my strains and they we you know have different conversations and and so and, and that i think translates out into the world and whoever uses it exactly what is uh what's your goal in the industry what do you want to accomplish by growing cannabis and providing it well, first we like to survive. That would be good. <laughs> Just kind of get back to the way that it was a little, a few years back where farmers were thriving. So we're kind of in, you know, a downturn right now and hopefully things will level out and get better. Um, but I think that like um, honing in on our brand a lot more and really coming up with unique things that people like a lot, um, unique strains and also other products too. Um, that's a goal of mine is to continue making some topicals and other herbal products that I've been making for a long time and and kind of taking that on its own tangent. I'm excited to do that. So, um, mm -hmm. and I think also, um, it's like integrating more permaculture practices back in, you know, into the farm too. So yeah. Learning mm -hmm. new things always. Like honestly, like I, I want to get people to pay attention more, you know, and uh, <clears throat> kind of level the playing field and like, and have people like learn the difference between like, you know, the really budget stuff that nobody put any intention into versus, you know, what, um, what we're growing and how much energy and love we put into it and like our farmers, like, I really want I feel like <clears throat> this is like our opportunity to really educate the masses in that way and get people to pay attention more than they have. So that's what I want to say. <laughs> Great. Um, what are you most excited about? <clears throat> Did you just start crying? You're uh -huh. so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, most excited about? Well, boy, that's a hard question right now. Um, I think just for me personally, I, um, I'm excited about like creating more of a little ecosystem here on our farm. That's something that I'm looking forward to putting more time and attention into. Um, but I guess I'm excited for the genetic diversity this year. We brought in some cool new things and added some, like started a bunch of seeds from some land races and um that we've come across and brought in some other cbd genetics so i'm super excited about to see the cbd crosses and and the strains that are going to come out of this crop this year yeah yep <laughs> mm -hmm. i think if uh, you know in terms of changes i wish we could kind of backtrack a couple years and with the perspective that we have right now because it would have been nice for the farmers to put in a lot of input into the way that things were written. A lot of the laws and regulations didn't come from a place of understanding how farming and cannabis farming in particular work. 
Um, so it would be really nice to have the farmers um, ha be a part of making policy. Yes, yeah. exactly. So like going back and just kind of like building it with thriving in mind instead of like the state and you know agencies making a lot of money off of us where they think that cannabis farmers have tons of cash, which is not true. Yeah. So um, I think that would be nice to come, you know, kind of like rebuild all the structure of everything from scratch. Yeah, so yeah, James, That's aspirations. It's, it's like leveling the playing field, you know, really <laughs> right. educating people mm -hmm. and, and building this industry based on the reality of the situation and not based on all these assumptions that people have been making about people who have been in, in the industry and the, <clears throat> the lazy cannabis farmer that's just got money buried all over the yard, which, you know, our house isn't sided. We've been here for almost 20 years, you know, 17 years. And <laughs> we do our best. And, yeah, we do our best, but it's, <laughs> it's not the reality, you know. Mm -hmm and make it more of a fair system which you know is what like you know our country is supposed to be about you know is what it was built upon and you know in in theory and and that you know anybody can you know can make what they what they wanted themselves if they put the put themselves you know all into it but the cards have been so stacked um and I feel like the deck needs to get shuffled, you know, there needs to be a new dealer and, and we need to be able to, uh, you know, ha have a fair playing field. And so I feel like, you know, like having this industry, like really having like more um, um, female CEOs than any other industry and like these big changes that are coming along is like the best chance we got.